Ready for the upcoming total solar eclipse happening Monday, April 8th. People who are blind and have low vision across the U.S. will be able to experience the big event thanks to a special device that translates light into sound. It's called the Light Sound Box. Joining us live this morning to talk more about it is Light Sound team member and graduate student Soleil Hyman. Soleil, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, talk to us about how this works. This is fascinating. Yeah, so the light sound device, it's a small, I've actually got one here, um, you can see it. It's about the cell phone size and um, it uses what we call Arduino technology, which are just kind of off the shelf circuit board components. And it has a light sensor that reads in how bright the ambient light is and has a kind of onboard computer microcontroller board that determines what notes are played based on the actual brightness of the light. And then it outputs one of three different instruments in very bright light, like direct sunlight. Um, you have a flute sound that descends as it gets darker. Eventually that turns into a clarinet sound in mid light. And then during totality in dark light, you get a clicking sound where the clicks get more and more spaced out the darker it goes. Um, so it is basically a way of transforming the intensity of light into sound. And um, it's a completely open source project. We've got all of our resources online um, available for people to make them. And we've also been running, we've run a lot of workshops and we've produced over 900 devices that we've distributed wow. across um, the United States to places in the path of totality. Wow, this really truly is incredible. My goodness, it's, it's way over my head, but I and we are so thankful for people like you who can, can dream up these ideas and really bring them to fruition. This truly is incredible and so inclusive for so many people. Talk to us about where you got this idea. So I actually got involved in the project in 2018, right after the total solar eclipse in August 2017. Um, but my collaborator, Alison Barilla, um, she's the astronomy lab manager at Harvard University and the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And she was talking with Wanda Diaz Merced, who is um, a astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics as well at the time. She's elsewhere now. Um, and Wanda is a blind astronomer. And Wanda and Allison were talking about how to make the 2017 eclipse more accessible mm -hmm. to the blind and low vision. And they came up with this idea for a sonifying device for light. And they had the first prototype um, for the 2017 eclipse. And there were three that they had made at the time. There were two in Kentucky, um, one at Moorhead State University, one at the Kentucky School for the Blind. And then Allison was streaming the sound from Wyoming. Um, and after that, we I joined the project and helped redesign the device. We kind of added the instrument sounds that I told you about. Um, and then for, so I've, I've been involved with it since then. And then for the 2019 and 2020 South American solar eclipses, we built some devices and sent them to Chile and Argentina. And for this 2024 eclipse, we've just been partnering with a lot of people to, and a lot of volunteers to make as many as we can and distribute them across the path of totality. What an incredible impact you're having. This really, truly, I, I, I hope you know how, how awesome this is, uh, so the work much. that you're doing. This really, really is so impressive. Uh, what has the reaction been like so far from it's people who are positive. blind or who have low vision? Yes, yeah, so it's been incredibly, overwhelmingly positive. We've received We've built 900 devices, but we by the time we actually had to close our forum because we just have been so overwhelmed with requests, we had over 2,500 requests um, for devices, which has been amazing. People are very excited about it. I think the overwhelming response is just, um, especially from the blind and low vision community, just the excitement that there's a device built for them to be able to experience this event in real time. That's one of the really exciting things about the light sound is that it's a real-time sonification, so it's not a simulation of what's going to happen. It's a reflection of the actual light level at your location in real time. Um, and we're actually getting, trying to organize a live stream of the sound um, for people who can't get to a particular event. So we're hopefully going to be able to share information on that soon. But it's it's been overwhelmingly very positive, very exciting. Um, people are very excited about it as well. They should be because this a total solar eclipse is an exciting, incredible event. Yeah, especially when they only come around every few decades, right? The yeah. next one not being until I think 20, 2044. Uh, so I, in a particular 
country or in a location. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point. Absolutely. Uh, for, for us here in the U.S. Um, I, I do have one question for you. I know we're keeping our uh, a close eye on the forecast, right, leading up to uh, the total solar eclipse. I know here uh, here in Texas, it's not looking really great, the forecast. Will the forecast impact uh, this device? So it will, it will of, of course, impact the sound that you'll hear. So um, I don't know entirely how much the sound will change, but mm -hmm. it will still get dark. Mm -hmm. um, you if it's cloudy and you can't see the sun, you won't necessarily be able to see the solar corona, which is obviously one of the very exciting of points yeah. of an eclipse. Um, I know NASA will be streaming, uh, you know, we'll be doing a live stream online, yeah. um, but the light sound does reflect changes in clouds. And so as it gets darker, you will hear a sound change. Um, so hopefully even for sighted people, if there's a site that has a light sound, um, that will hopefully still make the event engaging and uh, still an experience to remember. Yeah, that's really neat. So the sound generated for folks using this device in Texas might be different uh, from the sound uh, that, that, that one gets in Kentucky or New York, depending on weather conditions. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. Really interesting. OK, well, Soleil Hyman, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to be here.